On May 1st, 1990, Pamela is at a school board meeting. She gets home about 10 o'clock. She goes to the front door and she notices that the light is out. This is odd. And she opens the front door and in the vestibule is her husband. She had arrived at her home and began screaming that there was something wrong with her husband. She starts banging on doors. Somebody call 911, hurry, hurry. My husband, my husband. It's emergency in 4E, missed a uh, summer hill condominium. There's someone passed out. I don't know, a girl is hysterical in here. She just ran over. Her husband is passed out. I was working as an investigative reporter in New Hampshire, and the scanner radio goes off, and we understand that a young man has been murdered inside his condominium. The telephone calls that came to the Derry Police Department all came from neighbors who heard her screaming and yelling. You know why he's passed out there, man? He's on the way. Do you know why he's passed out? No, we don't know. Pamela is outside. She's sobbing. She wants to know what's going on. Is there a burglar in the house? Is Greg OK? Is he breathing? What's happening? Pam Smart found his body. He was in the entranceway to his condominium. He was sprawled out on the ground. The first thing that we noticed was the body of the victim, Gregory Smart. There appeared to be a blue towel wrapped around his head. He's got a bullet wound in the back of his head. This, is, this looks like a mob hit. This is an execution. Right away, police had no idea who could be responsible. In most cases, pretty quickly, the murders make sense. Somebody's involved in gangs or drugs, or there's a history of, of domestic dispute in their lives. In this case, here's this young man at the beginning of his life and career in insurance. He's not married a year yet to a lovely young woman, and he's dead. The police were groping for leads at the time. He, he had uh, apparently expired, they determined, almost immediately. Pam called the house, and she was hysterical, and she screamed into the phone, Mom, come quick, Greg's dead. And inside, I was trembling, and I thought, well, maybe there's been an accident. People in that house that night told me that she was a wreck. She was an inconsolable mess. She did seem um, extremely shaken at the time, extremely emotionally distraught. She was soaking wet, her clothing from sobbing. We were all a mess, saying, how, why, is it true? In that first interview with Diane Sawyer, Pam talks about the tragic night. What happened to Greg is the most horrible thing I've ever gone through in my life. And I, I'm still haunted every day by memories of what must have happened to him inside our house before he was killed. And although I wasn't there, I feel that because, because of that, I'll, I'll never know how Greg was feeling at the time. I keep thinking of how afraid he must have been and how senseless this whole tragedy was. And a lot of times I still can't even believe that he's gone. Greg Smart still has on the clothes from work. It looks like Greg must have walked into the middle of a botched, screwed up burglary. We noticed that several things were moved. The stereo system had been ransacked. CDs were laying on the floor. Pillowcases had been ripped open. The uh, stuffing had been removed. We found that the upstairs as well had been ransacked. The dressers had been gone through completely. However, police find that Greg still has his wallet. He still has a gold wedding band on his hand. Pamela reported nothing much was missing except a few little pieces of her jewelry. This is not a usual burglary. Usually, burglars in this region don't carry firearms or guns. They're not planning on any kind of confrontation at all. There was no forced entry at the front door or the back door. No signs, no disturbances of someone breaking in. Something just doesn't seem right here. Kitchen chef's knife is stuck into the ground. They found a, a marijuana cigarette, a reefer, in his car. So they think, well, maybe there's drugs involved. Dead end. The next lead is that 
Greg might have had a gambling problem. They search phone records and they find that he had been calling a gambling service to go to Atlantic City. Maybe he owed somebody money. Again, dead end, nothing there. So every single lead that we got, all of them led to dead ends. At that point, they really are searching and asking the public's help because they, frankly, don't have a break and they need one. A dead body killed execution style. That is a stunner for Derry, New Hampshire. And then a few days after Greg Smart's murder, something strange happens at his wake. A group of unidentified teenage boys show up and everyone's thinking, who are those guys? And what's their connection to Greg? So after weeks of investigating by the police and nothing is happening, nothing is popping, no new information, suddenly out of the blue. A man walks into the police station with a 38 caliber revolver. And he says, this is my gun and I think it was used in the Gregory Smart murder case. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.